Hi, I'm Kimball Johnson, the Curriculum Developer at Chef Software. Today I want to introduce you to Chef Policy Files. These are the method in which you define which Chef cookbooks run on your system. They define the run list, that is the list of Chef recipes that will be run on the system, along with any configuration parameters. The policy file process also handles resolving all of the dependencies for your cookbooks. To get started, let us examine the state of our systems in Chef Automate. Here we can see that we have six systems, three designated as production and three designated as staging. They are for running our application but currently are not being managed by Chef. We have set up compliance scans using Automate and as we can see they are currently failing. We need to fix this but as these are critical business systems we need to do so in a structured manner with testing. We shall see how Chef policy files can assist us with this. First off, in our working directory, we can use Chef to create a skeleton policy file. This working directory can be separate from any cookbooks or combined with an application cookbook. We are going to use a separate directory. We then run the command Chef generate policy file. We see that the Chef generate command will run a Chef script in order to generate this skeleton policy file. Once we have generated the skeleton, we need to open the policy file in our editor. This is named policyfile.rb by default, but can have any name with the rb extension to be more descriptive. In our policy file there are several sections. At the top a comment that directs you to the documentation. The first configuration item is the name of the policy. This is referred to in the chef client configuration that runs this policy. It should be descriptive so you know what the machines running it are configured to do. We are going to simply name ours Demo System. The next configuration item is the default source. This, as described in the comment, says where Chef should find any cookbooks that are required, but not explicitly given a location. More than one location can be provided. The default is to use the public supermarket, but you can also use a private supermarket, a Chef server, a Git repository, or an Artifactory server. You can also specify individual cookbooks with a location later in the file. For now, we will stick with the default. The next item is the run list. This is the ordered list of recipes that Chef Client will evaluate. This is the same as specifying it on the command line to Chef Solo or in the node information with Chef Server when not using policy files. We do not want to set a run list yet, as we just want to replicate the audit failure. However, you cannot have an empty run list, so we will specify the audit cookbook. Without any additional configuration, this won't do anything, but when we go to production we can configure it to send the compliance reports to Chef Automate. Finally, we can save and exit our editor. The next step in the process is to run the Chef install command to compile our policy file. This is a process of taking the run list in the policy file and resolving all the dependencies. The cookbooks are downloaded into a local cache and the checksums of them saved into the lock file. This means that you can guarantee that the cookbooks you get now and test will be exactly the same in production. Now we can start the testing. The standard Chef plugin for Test Kitchen supports policy files by default. We have also set up Test Kitchen to dynamically create an EC2 instance to replicate the environment we are using in production. Running Kitchen Converge will create this instance and run Chef Client on it using our new policy. Of course, this does nothing yet, but prepares us for the next stage of testing. We need to set up Test Kitchen to use our compliance profile from Automate on our test system. The Inspect Verifier plugin supports loading a profile directly from Automate, so we can use the same compliance profile that our production systems are being checked with. To access this, we have already logged into Automate from the Inspect command line. For more details, you can refer to the documentation. By running Kitchen Verify, we see Inspect taking the compliance profile from the Automate server and transferring it to our test instance and running. We see that the tests are performed on the test instance and failing in the same manner as we saw on Automate. Now we have replicated our failure, we should implement the fix. This is simply achieved in this case with the public remediation cookbook. We can add it to the run list in the policy file, but before we run Test Kitchen again, we need to reconfile the lock file using Chef Update. This, as we described earlier, is part of the benefit of policy files. The lock file contains a fixed list of all the cookbooks in their files, all checksummed, so even if you modify the cookbooks, you run the exact same state as when you created the lock file. 
Now when we run kitchen test, we see at the end our compliance tests are passing. Now we have demonstrated the basics of policy files, setting a run list, managing dependencies, and using Test Kitchen to demonstrate our changes are correct. In the next video, we shall see how to apply them to our staging and production environments with Chef Client and the process of promoting a policy between the environments. See you in the next video. In the meantime, you can check out our full documentation on our website, docs.chef.io, and follow the hands-on labs at Learn Chef. Goodbye.